Hey, Patreon supporters. I'm gonna try to give you some behind the scenes stuff. So as I get into some of these videos that I have for the future, I wanna share my ideas with you. And one of them has to do with why 21 inch wheels work so well off-road compared to smaller diameter wheels. And because I just recently acquired a GS with a 21 inch wheel, and I went through the process of going, do I really wanna keep that or do I wanna go back to the 19? This is what I came out with, and I'm keeping the 21. And here's why I considered getting rid of it, or if you're looking at making a conversion to a motorcycle and changing wheel diameters that aren't factory, what goes wrong with that? And what happened is, when I have my, my wheels, and I have my motorcycle, it weighs pretty level. And so the attitude of the motorcycle is correct. And this affects how the bike handles when cornering, how it handles its speed, how it carries a load. When I make that front wheel bigger, essentially what happens is the motorcycle ends up riding like this because our wheel is bigger, but our suspension is the same length. And this attitude change where the motorcycle is now running uphill makes the steering less predictable, makes the cornering unstable, makes the bike uncomfortable. So this is a problem. To solve that, and I already showed this uh, in another video, what I did was I took the front suspension and I made it shorter. And then essentially what that did was that took that motorcycle, put it back down to a level plane with the large tire, and now my handling's correct again. That fixed the problem of switching from a tire diameter that wasn't designed for a bike to the one that is. Now the difference between the two, if you take a look at the, the wheel itself, when you're taking and looking at a 21 inch wheel here, basically you end up with one inch on both sides. So you're thinking, okay, well 19 inch, we get a two inch, a two inch gain, but in reality, you're only getting a net gain of one inch. That changes where the axle height is, and that matters because there's four major things that make, and there's more than this, but we're gonna stick with the four things that really stand out of why a 21 feels so much better off-road. And Paul and I went out and rode his 1200, rode my 1200 back to back. And one of the things that Paul mentioned to me, he said, as I was riding up on these routes and obstacles, he kept waiting for the thud, for the clunk, and it just never happened. He just sort of rolled over things. One inch is not very much. And my question was, why was there such a dramatic difference going from a 20, from a 19 to a 21? And this is what happens when you're looking at a 19 and you have an obstacle over here, it turns out that the vector is tangent to the contact point. And when this happens, you end up with a very sharp rebound. Essentially, you run into the object and then the tire bounces up and over. And if this obstacle is a little bit lower, it's not quite as sharp. But anytime you can raise this up, raise that axle point, and make that, uh, that angle less, then you decrease the impact point. And that's what happened here. As I go up to a 21, that moves it up just slightly, and that changes that angle. And that makes that less sharp. It doesn't feel like you're bouncing up into the air. Instead, you're deflecting off. Again, one inch, probably not enough to say that was huge, what a difference. But there's a couple other things that are going on here. The other thing that's ha happening here is the tangential velocity versus the angular velocity. And the tangential velocity is basically the direction we're moving forward. So this is our, our tangential velocity. The 19 inch, and the 21 inch have the same tangential velocity. They're going forward the same rate of speed. But what happens is this angle here, this rotation here, is the angular velocity, the rotation of the tire. 
And it turns out that this is slower on a large tire. Again, if you think about, uh, if you put a, a valve stem here and you roll this one full turn, you put a valve stem on the 21 and go one full turn, the 19 will end up here and the 21 will end up here on one full rotation. This tire is rotating at a lower speed. That is part of the benefit of that 21. Again, small, but all these things add up. When we looked at that deflection, and we're coming across and, and we have that endpoint, turns out that tangential velocity is, is important to how that deflects off, but also the angular velocity is important. And when this is slower, and that angular velocity impacts that point, you decrease the deflection rate. So now I have a slightly higher axle point, plus I have a tire going slightly slower. What I did was I measured the 19, I measured the 21 with the tire on board, and you're roughly four inches longer to get around that 21. So our circumference of that tire is about four inches larger when you go around the tire itself. Small. The height is small, but these things add up as we move forward. So here's the other thing that's happening. When you're talking about the, the obstacle here, when I have a, a larger arc, which would be a 21 versus a, a smaller arc, then that roll off also makes a difference. It, there's more of a, a ramp here, you know, coming on and rolling onto that is uh, with the 21 versus the 19. Again, an advantage when I'm rolling onto that, I'm not hitting it as straight because I have more of an angle. Another benefit of the 21. But wait, we're not done yet. If you order your 21 right away, we have more for you. So here goes. When we're going through a a section where you have a kind of a whoop section where it moves up and down. You're just rolling in and out. Not a tremendous difference between these two. And I'm not going to get into the the inline stabilization for things like sand and mud. That's a that's a different discussion. And there are advantages to a 21 there as well. And it has to do with the narrow of the tire, not necessarily the diameter of the tire. That's a whole different talk or a whole different concept or direction that I went this last week. I was, I was digging into some of my research to go, I know it works, why does it work? When we look at the, uh, if you have a couple of things that you have to go through obstacles wise, if you have a 19 inch tire versus a 21 inch tire, then what happens is the 19 is dropping farther into the hole. So now every time we go into one of these holes, it has to pop back out. Where this is really gonna be a reality for you, adventure riding is going to be, uh, when you're looking at sharp rock, that's usually where you're gonna find it the most, going over boulder or chunk rock, if you're going through ruts, places where you're not rolling all the way into it. If this tire was, you know, if this, this whole thing ran like this, and your tire is that big, it's not gonna really matter because this is gonna roll all the way down, all the way up, and both tires are gonna pretty much do the same thing. This is why when we get on gravel road or we get on dirt roads, there's not a huge advantage for a 21 over a 19. That doesn't really matter as much. What really makes a difference is the technical stuff, the, the hard chunk rock, the, the deep sand, all, all these different environments that are very technical. But the normal riding, just riding down a gravel road, a 19 or 21 isn't gonna make a difference. So if you're riding a 1200GS or you have a 1290 with a 19 inch and that's your primary riding style, there's nothing wrong with it. And what I did find is when I got onto the road, there's a small advantage to the 19 in handling and comfort factor when you go into the dirt the 21 is a huge advantage in that direction. So the, the, the question you have to bring to yourself is, the middle's pretty much the same, but as I get more extreme on the street, is that more important to me, or the extreme in the dirt, is that more important to me? One of the factors I'm not gonna address here is ground clearance. 
because with ground clearance, if you increase the diameter of both the front and the rear, which on something like a 1200 with a drive line, you can't change the ratios. Now you're changing the ratio of your drive system. If you have a an 800 or a 790 or something with a chain drive, you can certainly change your gearing to fix it. But there's other considerations when you think about changing that diameter and how much power it takes to push that tire. And so we're just going to assume we're not going to do that. What that means is that when I raise only one, if I go from a 19 to a 21, if I have a 17 inch, uh, if I'm riding around a bike that has a 17 and I go to a 19, the 21 is pretty extreme. Again, we have this attitude change issue, which means either I raise the front because I gained height from the tire, so therefore I have to get taller rear suspension to match it, or if I raise the front, I have to drop the front suspension to bring it back down. Either one way or the other, I need to make a correction for the attitude, which means I'm not going to really get a net gain on ground clearance. So we're just going to say ground clearance is not a benefit for the taller wheels in this environment. But the other thing that we do get, and this was part of why Paul felt less impact, had to do with the suspension rate. When we roll over those obstacles and we decrease the, the slope of that tire as opposed to being a, a steeper tire that impacts and bounces off and we, and we push that farther out, we pull that contact point. So if we look at that obstacle again, if we, if we have that bigger tire, you know, we're talking about where the contact point is and how that impacts as opposed to, you know, if I make it a, a smaller tire, then that contact point is here. I mean, that ramp point here, Again, these are changing the, the ramp effect, how you roll over it. That also affects how quickly that suspension rate is, how much it, how fast it compresses. And when I slow down that compression rate and I change that impact point, that less, that 20 millimeters less of suspension travel that I now have really isn't a penalty because I've made up with it, made up for it on this other side. So there's a lot of things going on here. And this boils down to when we make changes on motorcycles, when we change the handlebars, we don't make big changes. Often it's very small changes that make all the difference. When we change suspension, it's not huge changes, it's small changes, wheels, uh, tire dimensions, all these things add up. When we add weight to the bike, it's not the three pounds on the panniers, it's three pounds on the panniers, it's the eight pound winch, it's the, it's the tent that was five pounds instead of four pounds, all that stuff stacks up and adds up. And that makes a huge difference here, especially when we start talking about when you start changing wheel sizes and going to bigger wheels. One of the advantages that I have by staying with the wheels that are on the bike, which are a set of Woody's wheels, they're several pounds lighter on both ends. The 17 on the back is narrower. It carries a smaller tire. There's advantages to that, but also it has less weight, which means less unsprung weight. When we get into suspension, I'll explain why that is so important. But there are a lot of different things. All this stuff adds up. Long and short, larger diameter. If you're buying a bike and you really want to do well off-road, 21 is the, is the gold standard. That is the, the tire that you want on your motorcycle. If all you're doing is gravel roads and dirt roads, then... It really doesn't matter. You can even ride those around in 17s. It's not going to make a huge difference. If you get into deep sand and muck and mud, back to the 21. So the larger diameter, the better. I like to be challenged in my thought process. If you know that there are differences or you have better explanations in this, please share with me. Put it in the comments. Send me links to source documents on where I can find this information. One of the things that I have not found an answer for and I'm not a math guy, and maybe one of you knows the answer. I mentioned there is a net gain on the angular velocity of the larger wheel, but the truth is when we look at the axle, as we move out from the axle, although it takes the same amount of distance forward, that tangential you know, distance, to rotate one full time around here as it does here. When we look at the distance traveled, turns out the larger the diameter, the faster the outer part of that wheel is moving. So 
vertical. In theory, we would say, okay, uh, if we have the same tangential velocity, the same distance forward, we would say, all right, we know that this smaller wheel, this smaller diameter has to rotate more times, so it has to go faster than the large wheel to make the same distance, the same total distance. However, even though this wheel is rotating slower at the axle point to get there, therefore at this point here, the small wheel is moving very fast, the larger wheel is moving much slower. But the distance from here to here, this point here, that movement has to be moving faster than if these were going at the same rotation speed as down here. We do know there's a net gain. This is still moving slower than it is here. But what I don't know is what's the formula and who out there knows this? How do I actually figure out what is the difference in speed of rotation between the 19 inch and the 21, not as the wheel itself, but the outer portion of the wheel? If you have that answer, post it in the comments below. If you have a reference to where I can find it or a calculator where I can play with these things, please again, post it in the comments below. I read stuff, but again, as I get these ideas and I start working them out, looking for the research, I want to share with you, you know, as a behind the scenes on what's coming forward and what's going on. A lot of times these sort of details don't make the cut for the video. Thanks for supporting me on Patreon. Please uh, stick around and I'll keep making as many videos as I can. Uh, with the time that I have available. Thanks again. Till next time.